It's about tooth forms. That does have a little geometry map. But we have to go over that because it's so important when we're trying to do restorative work about the crowns to replace that. Also home care, it'll change that. And in fact, what about designation of teeth? So important, you have to kind of know the shape of the tooth to determine which ones have been extracted, which one are congenitally missing. Let's now go then into the tooth forms. First, we have the triangle, three-sided, again, all three sides are just about equal. Then we have the pentagon, five-sided. We then have the trapezoid, what's the trapezoid? Four-sided with only two parallel sides. Finally, we have kind of a crazy, look at that crazy rectangle. Notice that's four-sided like a rectangle, but the opposite sides are parallel. Let's go over the designation of each one of the tooth types as according to its tooth form. We have the incisors, we have the canines, premolar and molars, we have the labial view first, then secondly we have the mesial view. Now the labial view will also be similar on the lingual with some modification, similar to the mesial view will be very similar on the distal with some modification. The final column in this goes over what? Function. So we want to compare the tooth form to function. So let's first talk about the incisors. Remember they're for biting and cutting the food because of their triangular proximal form. We have the maxillary and the mandibular here and notice on the proximal they have that cutting and again biting and cutting form. Very, very important during mastication. Next let's go over the canines. Notice the canines from the the proximal also have that. They are, have that tapered shape, prominent cusp because of their crown, function to pierce and tear food during mastication. But they're different look from the labial. They have a rhomboid shape. They have a rhomboid shape and notice the two edges be what? End to end on the rhomboid. Very interesting. The canines though in contrast have a pentagonal shape. They have that then, again, ice cream, so nice, ice cream type effect right here. They have then the ice cream shape. Notice they meet end to end in this perspective, but we really will see them being offset. Remember, they're offset, and that'll be very, very important during angle classification of malclusion. Next is the premolars. Notice their transitional teeth only found in the permanent dentition. They assist the canines in that piercing and tearing the food because of their prominent cusp because they have more than one, unlike the canine that has one. The premolars in just a moment we'll be talking about their assist the molars. But let's get to back to that. Let's go over the premolars. Notice like the canines from the labial there have the pentagonal shape. But the maxillary and the mandibular on the proximal are very, very different. We have a trapezoidal shape on the proximal, on the maxillary, but then we have a rhomboidal shape on the proximal view on the mandibular. Hmm, interesting. Notice that proximal view has a lingual inclination. That lingual inclination does change clinical perspective. Again, that's for all the mandibular posterior teeth. Notice we have it for the, mo the molars also. So all mandibular posterior teeth have this lingual inclination that we can see in the rhomboid here. How does that affect it clinically? Well, first of all, it's very difficult to do instrumentation, as you can imagine, because the occlusal kind of is bulky and then more narrows down because of the rhomboid. So it's a significant factor during instrumentation. You will always notice a problem in home care. People never get that cervical area because of the lingual inclination on the mandibles. Then we have the tongue in the way. Oh, it's in the lower. Oh, 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 oh. So again, knowing these things is really important. Also giving an injection on the lingual of the mandibular first molar because of alternative innervation that we'll talk about during our head and neck section, section about, again, troubleshooting the inferior alveolar block. That gets involved too. It's very, very difficult to know, again, where to do that specialized, localized injection that they'll be talking about. Let's now look at, again, we have the premolars here with a pentagonal because they're what? Transitional, 
again, we see that pentagonal shape, both maxillary and mandibular, on the premolars because they're transitional teeth, as we said. But let's look at the molars. Notice they have that big, wide, again, masticatory surface or occlusal surface. And we'll talk specific, specifically about the occlusal table. A lot of prominent cusps. They function then, again, for that grinding. They're assisted by the premolars. Premolars also will be involved in the grinding. So again, those are the two things. But notice it is a what? It's a trapezoid meeting a trapezoid. So this is why we need to know the tooth forms. Let's go over those again. Maxillary premolars, crown outline for mesial distal is trapezoidal, with the longer of the two parallel sides towards the occlusal surface. In contrast, the mandibular premolars are rhomboidal or four-sided, having opposite sides parallel from the mesial or distal views. Remember, the rhomboidal outline is inclined lingually, allowing, again, correct intercuspal contact of the mandibular tooth with its maxillary antagonist, as we said. Similar to the maxillary premolars, the maxillary molars are trapezoidal in shape when viewed from the mesial or the distal, as are all maxillary posteriors when the mandibular molars are rhomboidal from the same views as are all mandibular posteriors. In contrast, when viewed from the buccal or lingual, the molar's crown outline for both arches is trapezoidal. So tie in again and reiterate the information, looking at your table, pointing things out, not making any assumptions. So important, geometry, science, math, dental, all meets. It's fantastic, science rules. I hope you've enjoyed this time and how to share it with your dental hygiene students to make it both interesting and specific and tie in with the clinical ramifications. Enjoy, bye.